Hello, fabulous friends and fans. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of January 8, 2017. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an exciting week it is. Now, one thing that's really happening that I think is big, well, actually, there's several really big things happening. And all of it says to me, as I look at the sky, encapsulated, if you will, the one word that comes to mind is forward. Forward moving, moving forward. Let's put a hyphen in there and call it one word. All of us out there in some way are going to be feeling a sense of momentum, feeling a sense of being done with mourning what was or what wasn't, being afraid of what could be, and now comes a time for action. Now, some of us are going to take that action intelligently and strategically. Others out there, though, I gotta say, there's an energy here that says there's gonna be a lot of overdoing it and a lot of very emotional reactions at that. And also emotions are going to be very much on the surface. So we can expect to see uh, some very powerful displays, if you will. A desire for change can lend itself to making some declarations that allow that change to happen. So there's a few things that are happening in the sky that suggest this. And pretty much all the stuff that's happening is happening early in the week. So that's really where the peak moments are. And then later in the week, we are resolving the energy and moving forward with it. So let's start right out of the gate. Mercury will go direct. Now Mercury moving direct, yay, let's celebrate, right? This is gonna help us to bring clarity to issues that have been with us since early December. So think back, what was taking place in your life as you were finishing November, starting December, because in some way, this is gonna be a moment that brings further clarity to just that. But the difference now is the clarity that comes will be translated into action. Mercury's moving forward, and also what this means is, you know, it's not that rare for this to happen. I see this happen maybe once every year or so. There tends to be a brief window of time where all planets are direct. Shadow, no shadow, doesn't matter. All planets are moving forward. That is what is taking place this week. And it is actually going to kick off a solid four week period where all planets are moving forward. So all of us are going to be feeling that momentum, the new energy, the new year. But it's not only the fact that all these planets are moving forward. What we are also having take place this week is Grand Cardinal Cross. Now that might sound familiar to those of you who've been into astrology for a while. 2010, we saw some major Grand Cardinal Cross action. So what is that? Well, what it is is major players in cardinal signs. Now, cardinal signs are those that begin a season. So they represent beginnings, fresh energy. They represent change, beginning again in some cases as well. We have the sun standing between, in a cardinal sign, standing between Uranus on one side and Jupiter on the other. So that is creating a T-square. They're all there in cardinal signs, but then we have something else happening as well, and that is the full moon. There is a full moon happening in the sign of Cancer, also a cardinal sign. So all four cardinal signs, all four starts of the season are lit right about now. <laughs> and what this does suggest, and especially with that full moon, is that sense of awareness of what we really want and is that sense of emotion being very much on the surface. Now, here's the key with this energy because as I look at just these placements, it is possible to behave impulsively with this. It is possible uh, to overdo it, to overpromise. It is also possible for just surprises and you know wrenches to come out of nowhere. But this can actually go very much in your favor with just a little bit of strategy and a little bit of thought. And that is because what is also happening right at the same time, a couple of very hopeful things are happening. One is Mars speaking in harmony with Pluto. I love this, okay? Let me scream it from the rooftop. I love this because this to me says action meets strategy. There's an understanding, a perception of how it is and where it is. Change can happen at the root. Meaningful change 
can take place right underneath the surface so that that ends up being the change that people see. So there's going to be a very clear cut pathway forward if we're going to create change in our own lives and in the lives of the people around us. And also when I think about transformation, when I think about change, it's not just about the individual, right? Of course, there's the collective change as well. There's the individual changes you may go through sort of outwardly in your life, but there's also that change that comes when you understand what is worth putting your energy towards. Not just about being smart, but about knowing where it is that you place your energy ultimately is going to be the place that magnifies. So where is it that you want change to happen in your own life and the lives around you? Where is it that you can get to basics? Where is it that you can get to what's essential and realize what's superficial or what just doesn't matter? Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with the superficial, right? A lot of the uh, experience that we have here on earth can involve, you know, shiny things, pricey things, nothing wrong with that at all. But it's when you don't realize that that's an illusion, that's when it can trip you up a little bit. That's when it can get in your way, when it keeps you from the things that you know are actually better for you, that you know are actually good for you. If what is shiny captures your attention so much that you don't realize the spiritual privilege and the spiritual opportunity that some sacrifice involves so that you transcend the superficial and have things and be things that truly do matter to you that much more deeply, that's where it can trip us up as human beings. So the Grand Cross is basically a bunch of squares, okay? And squares are conversations. They're the name of conversations that speak to tension and also motivation. They are energy, they are needed if meaningful change is gonna happen. But it's also about being smart about what truly is meaningful change, defining it and being, being smart about the actions that we're taking in support of it. And I think that's where Mars and Pluto are gonna help us a whole lot because otherwise it would just be a lot of passion and a lot of impulse and a, you know just a whole lot of things on the surface rather than action that ends up being meaningful. We've got that right balance where we're going to have that sense of bravery but also have that sense of determination and even some urgency to be part of our future, the future that we desire to live in our own lives. Now, as I look at the sky, yes, we've got this, you know, cardinal cross happening. A lot of the cardinal cross and a lot of the emotion is going to be because of the full moon. There's a full moon happening in the sign of Cancer, also cardinal sign. So what this says is that that desire for change, that desire to do something meaningful as well, like personally meaningful to you, what you're passionate about, what is your emotional truth, all of that is going to be very much on the surface. So again, as I look at this sky, I think that for most of us out there, there's at least one situation in our life that has become kind of un unacceptable that has become kind of uh, a little bit more difficult, uh, that may in some way represent the superficial, that may in some way represent the illusion and not some deeper truth we know to be true about ourselves. Well, with a sky like this, it becomes very difficult not to acknowledge that very truth. Regardless of the consequences, we are determined to connect and to know that very understanding and that very understanding of what it means to listen to yourself and to honor that going forward. And the momentum is there to move forward and to make those changes. And I'm really excited about that. So trust the emotions because it is gonna be a little bit of a roller coaster, especially in the early part of the week, but that emotional roller coaster is showing us something about our truth. It is helping us to see ourselves, how we're using our energy, our spiritual energy, emotional energy, but of course our actual actions as well. How are we using them in support of the person that we desire to be, the life that we desire to have, the world that we desire to be in? How are we using it in support of that? And where is it that we say we want that, but we're actually working very much against that? This sky will bring us clarity personally in our own lives and allow us to move that much forward towards a future truly inviting. 
Now that isn't all that's happening this week. We've also got Mercury moving forward into the sign of Capricorn, also a cardinal sign, allowing us to think a little bit more practically, allowing us to think about how what we're doing now is contributing to where we will be in 10 years, in 15 years, in 20 years. It allows us to consider the legacy that we are creating and how we feel about that. But there's something else that's happening right with the full moon that I'm really excited about, and that is Venus meeting Neptune in the sky. This is super idealistic, super romantic. It's also super artistic and spiritual as well. This is energy of faith, and this is energy of divine love and divine guidance. Now, this can be really great if you are an artist of any kind. Musicians in particular, really you wanna be tapping into this energy. Make sure you are taking time at this full moon to like be in your studio or wherever it is that you feel inspired, have your creation tools that you use ready, whatever that may be because this kind of energy can really have you riding a wave towards creating something that feels uh, that it resonates deeply as inspiration and that it speaks to some higher ideal as well. But also, of course, romance as well. With all this you know, desire for change, one of the inspirations for that change may actually be love or flirtation or the belief in love the belief in the possibility. Now it's also possible with this energy that we may imagine all kinds of things that really are not there. <laughs> so be a little bit mindful of that. Um, and it's also really possible to get very carried away. So it's up to you to decide how you're gonna use that energy. I would say channel it in more spiritual directions rather in the substance oriented directions. Uh, and you'll use this energy that much better. And also, thankfully, with the sky like this, there can also be an element of humility as well. Now, as I look at the sky, you know, I think about how with that cancer energy, that cancer energy can be very much about like sort of base identity, um, the most immediate, not necessarily the I am that you choose for yourself or that you know to be true about you, but things like your ethnicity, your nationality, things like that can be very highlighted under this energy. And I think, unfortunately, I'm so sorry to say this, but it does look like we may see um, an example or two of nationalism as we are seeing in our world right now, but it, it seems to be highlighted uh, some example of nationalism that is less uh, than welcome. And, uh, that could be representing really getting carried away or romanticizing what otherwise should not be romanticized. So this is something that we want to watch out for in ourselves, in ourselves. And this is something that I think really represents where we are going, the next step and really represents, you know, I remember saying that we as, you know, whether you call us light workers or healers or whatever it is, artists, whatever it is, we are being called to step up our game. We are being called to really connect to that energy of love and wisdom and make it that much more powerful. Because if we allow ourselves to be carried on the wave that's gonna be there very possibly this week in particular, very much on the surface, if we just allow ourselves to be carried, we will be going through all kinds of emotions about what's right and what's wrong and who we are and who they are. And that ultimately does not move us individually for our own energy, but also doesn't move humanity in a direction that we can feel good about, that we can be proud of. We all know that we are capable of setting up sort of, you know, however illusionary structures, uh, beliefs and values that allow us to feel a sense of security, a sense of comfort and us versus them uh, kind of situation. But the truth is that we're all the same. Like we really are all the same. And what I mean by that is we all feel fear. We all want to be right. We all want our lives to matter in some way. We search for meaning. We search for happiness. We search for love. However, it may look on the surface, even if it looks like it's taking that person the whole other way, that is ultimately, and these are ultimately sort of the basic human urges, basic human drives that we all have. With a sky like this, it'll become very tempting to sort of choose a side or choose a camp. Well, I would say if you're gonna choose a side, if you're gonna choose a camp, let that side be 
kindness and decency towards the people around you. I've been meditating on this recently. I've been meditating on the fact that, you know, just being a nice person doesn't guarantee you success. We know that. It doesn't mean that outwardly it's going to help you get what you want any more than not being kind is going to help you get what you want, right? I've been thinking about this lately, but the thing is, is that I know for me, I need to be kind to be at peace with myself. I need to be able to communicate with people in a certain way that is, that is acknowledging that they have something within them, that spark, that divine, that love, that wisdom, it is there. Even if they make it very hard to see it, it is there. And that is worthy of being acknowledged in a way that deserves kindness, that deserves gentleness. If I don't do that, it is very hard for me to be at peace with myself. And that's the thing. And that's going to be part of the invitation this week. What is it that you need to be at peace with yourself? What do you need to do? Because that roller coaster will carry you, will carry all of us. And then we're just sort of reacting to our environments. We're reacting to what comes on the TV. We're reacting to what we see on social media rather than deciding, rather than choosing. Choose what kind of person you want to be because there's going to be lots of motivations to go in all kinds of directions now. And that choice is going to allow you to make changes that matter. That's the great invitation now. We get to choose who we are going to be. And we get to choose to be people who are kind, who are decent, and who recognize our inherent, very beautiful human community. Well, thank you so much for watching. I'm truly so grateful for it. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, share, thumbs up. It does mean so much. As you may be able to tell, my voice is getting better. I'm super excited about that. It's still not at 100%, but it is starting to move along. It's only been a couple of days now that I've started uh, working in terms of like writing and answering emails. But I'm so very grateful. My heart is so grateful for your patience, uh, for your love, for your reaching out, for your support, all of it. It means so much to me thank you so very much so i am going to keep this short i just have a couple of announcements as i said my voice is starting to get better and i'm hoping fingers crossed that i can do my facebook live this will be my third uh, sort of uh, rescheduling so i'm hoping that third time is a charm and right now it is tentatively scheduled for january 10th at 11 p.m eastern time so i hope that you will find me on my Facebook page, NadiaShaw.com, like you write it out, .com, just like my YouTube channel, <laughs> NadiaShaw.com. I hope that you'll find me there. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Also, a lot of feedback I've been getting uh, for my friend Catherine Weber's success pack for the year of the rooster. Now, I have partnered with her. Please do use the links in the description because she needs to know if I'm actually doing anything helping her at all. <laughs> and so I would like her to know that friends and fans are connecting with her. Uh, and yeah, so use that feng shui, feng shui your way towards uh, really helping you to create an environment that's going to support the life that you want, the person that you want to be. And she's helped me so much. And I first got to know her about three years ago through her work. And I'm truly so grateful for it. So world renowned expert, Catherine Weber. So check out those links in the description on YouTube. And I hope that I see you on Facebook. Um, and please just keep sending your best wishes. And my hope is, my sincere hope is, is that it's coming up that I'm in full steam ahead. <laughs> so please, yes, universe, please have me in full steam ahead <laughs> right about now <laughs> because it's really not me to not, uh, not be doing anything. But I appreciate, I appreciate you staying with me. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you putting up with my voice sometimes being less than ideal and being enthusiastic about what I share. And of course, as you know, um, you know, if I may say, I do believe, and I've been meditating a lot on why this happened. And I think it's because, and again, this is a personal process for me, but I think that it's like I am understanding my voice in the world and finding my voice in the world in a new way that I hadn't before. And I can feel it and I can see it like with the things that I've been writing, the thoughts that I've been starting to have, and also my understanding of what love and wisdom is and how is it, what is it that I meant to do to affirm that in the world? Because 
everything I do is about affirming greater love and greater wisdom in the world. And so my hope, of course, is that this video does that and every uh, video does. But my hope also is that that commitment and that determination, that evolution of understanding love and wisdom also represents an evolution of my astrology and makes me a better astrologer and also helps me to do more of what I'm meant to do, but also helps helps all of you out there as well in some way. The fact that I am some small part of your sacred journey, it just means so much to me. It allows me to live my vision and to live my mission. The vision is being recalibrated in some ways right about now, but I know that this has been an amazing vehicle for me, astrology, and I know how much astrology has helped me to really affirm and to understand the greater love and greater wisdom, which is ultimately, I think, you know, one of those divine pursuits that as a human being, we're not meant to fully understand. But the fact that I'm on that journey and I have this astrology, right? I have this practice and the fact that you welcome me into your homes and your phones, on your tablets, the fact that I am part of affirming that for you, a truth that you know, which I think is why you are a friend and fan of my work. You're here because you believe that too, and you want that affirmed, that the universe is wise and loving. Well, my hope is that it becomes more and more evident that how I do that or, or how I'm communicating that is that much stronger, that much more determined and reaches that much more uh, in your heart as truth. The universe is wise and loving. I thank you so much again for your patience with me. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.